welcome all students. So, after our introduction to the course, we now proceed with the first module. So, as I told you, the course is based, which is on applied statistical thermodynamics. Uh, it is based on the concepts of thermodynamics and uh, the initial part I will devote to the introduction of since we have already read about classical thermodynamics. So, I will just let you introduce the concepts of statistical thermodynamics. Once it is given or outline is laid, then we will go into the details. So, this particular lecture what I will do is I will introduce to the concept of probability distribution as a whole and then I will also distribute or define the terms called as microscopic or a macroscopic state. So, today's lecture is devoted on the probabilistic description, macroscopic and microscopic states. So, what I will cover is, I will cover a brief introduction about what is statistical thermodynamics is and then how to take the statistical thermodynamics with respect to probability description. So, as you know that uh, statistical thermodynamics means where we use, we condense several data in the form of statistical manner, whether it is in probability distribution is one of them. Then we will talk about the concepts of macroscopic states in general and then we have microscopic states. So, the difference will be very clear that is macroscopic states means what you are observing in nature. Suppose you know now the temperature here is around 298 Kelvin. So, you know that is the temperature is 298.15 Kelvin that we call as the room temperature. Now, how does this temperature come? that can be governed from the microscopic states. So, for example, if I want to give the example of temperature only, it is governed by the velocity of the particles. So, there are many particles in this case it is air. So, there are many particles and they are moving at different speeds and you know the kinetic energy can be converted to temperature. So, we will go one by one. So, what does statistical thermodynamics talk about? Statistical thermodynamics talk about predictions about the microscopic properties. So, from other properties, let us say from the molecular level properties can we predict macroscopic properties, let us say temperature or pressure or a volume of a certain gas contained inside a closed container that we called as or we term as macroscopic property. Okay? So, we should understand the difference carefully microscopic and macroscope. Microscopic determines the molecules of interest and how they are moving while macroscopic means the property. So, the macroscopic properties I have written here heat capacity because heat capacity you know uh, you have studied in classical thermodynamics is nothing but the partial derivative of the internal energy. So, ultimately you have the some macroscopic property the internal energy or uh, maybe uh, I can also talk about the chemical equilibrium constant or equation of state. So, equation of state what do you mean? So, as you know in ideal gas there is no interaction between molecules, but in equation of state you talk about real gases. So, it means how you can write out an equation where you can obtain the pressure and volume of a real gas. So, that is called equation of state. So, it means it can also reduce data introduction which is we are currently doing the statistical thermodynamics can also reduce data which can represent a real gas. So, as I told you, but where does this information comes from? It comes from the information only about the microscopic state of the system. When I talk of microscopic state, it means the position or the velocity of each molecule. So, the position and velocity of the each molecules determines the macroscopic state or the we can say sometimes average property. So, issue is when we talk about microscopic state, we talk about large number of molecules because we have here air. So, air we have number of molecules consisting of nitrogen and oxygen. They may be moving in different directions and if they are moving in different direction they will collide also within each other or they will collide with the other molecule let us say oxygen collides with nitrogen like that. So, it means there is nothing discrete here. So, it is a continuous process. So, the particles are moving randomly and from this positions and the velocities of the particles, we can obtain useful information such as for example, as I told you from kinetic energy of these particles, we can obtain temperature like that we can also obtain the volume in similar manner. So, these are called the 
large number of molecules. So it is governed by large number of molecules. Since there is large number of molecules, we do not have to use or we do not need data for each and every molecule. For example, if there is a molecule which is moving in certain direction, another molecule is moving in other direction. So the information of these molecules with respect to its position or velocity vector is not much used to us. We only require something which is in a statistical form. For example, I will take an example of a pressure of a gas in a container. So what is the pressure of a gas in this container? Let us say you have a gas in a closed container. How do you determine the pressure? The pressure is nothing but the particles or the gas particles or the gas molecules when they move, they will do two things. One is they will hit the container and they will hit also among themselves. So when they hit the container, you record the force acting on the container. So this force you can record for each molecule with container collision and then you add up all these collisions and then you take some average, you get the pressure. That is what force per unit area. So that is the way you get pressure. For example, if I want to draw it in this way, so let us say you have a container, let us say this is the container and uh, you have the gas particles in it, okay. It is a closed container. Let us say it is filled up with a gas, let us say a hydrogen gas. You have a hydrogen gas inside. So you have number of particles here gas molecules, let us say we are talking about 1 mole or we say about 1 liter of gas, so it will have, you can calculate how many molecules or you consider 1 mole of these molecules, so you know it is Avogadro's number of molecules. Now each molecule may move in different direction, let us say it will have a momentum in this manner or the other one is moving in this direction, this one is moving in this direction, this one this direction. So these are our random velocities, so the position and the velocity vector or we call as the momentum description of individual molecules is different. But what they do, they will strike the wall, they will strike the wall, keep hitting on the containers of the wall. So now when they hit the containers of the wall, you can measure what is the force applied. Then you divide by pressure, you get the pressure obtained due to one molecule. And then what you do, you add up all these forces by all the molecules when they are hitting the container. You sum them up, you get the overall pressure. That is what when we talk the gas is at this much pressure, let us say a gas is at 1 bar pressure. So we talk about the total force it is hitting or it is occupying within the container. Okay. So these type of uh, molecules, they may be 10 to the power of 424 uh, molecule wall. I am just giving an example for 1 mole of any gas, almost you will may have per a millisecond, you may have these many molecular collision with the, so molecular collisions may be so many collisions may occur, okay. So now the issue is, if there are so many molecules colliding with the container, do we need to take those data? Do we really require those data? How, when it has struck, what is its next position or should we update its position? Is it required? No. Do we need to object its position for individual molecule? So these are questions. How do we measure so many collisions? Uh, how do we, how do we, let us say, measure? So many collisions is impossible to measure. So these are the two questions. Do we update its position of all the molecules? And if so, how do we measure so many collisions? So it is not useful. So that is why when you talk of pressure, so pressure we talk, we tell it is 1 bar, it implies it is a long time average, it is a long time average of many such molecular events. So till now maybe I have able to make you understand that it is the property which is the long term average. When you talk about a statistical manner means we are taking about the collisions across a long period of time. So you average that you get the pressure. So if we cannot measure those collisions, if we cannot measure the force for each and every molecule, what is the way, what is the alternative we have? It is a direct way is there. What we do is instead of measuring all the collisions, we develop a microscopic theory which would be used as a scheme based on following the trajectories that is position and velocity of each molecule. So what do you do? You track the position and velocity of each molecules. 
okay. Then if you track the position and velocity of each molecule, then our, let us say you conduct calculation scheme for a certain amount of time. As I told you in the previous slide, it is the long term average, then you average up the property. Let us say you are measuring a dynamic property, uh, say viscosity or the or you can or you are measuring a property such as diffusivity. So, then you need a long term dynamic property, then you compute. So, this can be done, but this can be done means it is for a few molecules you can do. Let us 100 molecules or maybe 200 molecules and with the advent of new supercomputers, okay, you can go up to 1000 molecules and uh, the run you cannot possibly go for a real 1 second or like 4 second or 5 second like you do in experiments. What you do, you try to replicate within the realm of the computational enormity. So, you should not like you put in so many molecules and then you update the trajectory, it becomes a huge computational ask. So, that even with modern supercomputers, you cannot perform the task. So, this you can do, but albeit with a lesser number of molecules. This is what a particular area is devoted, which is called molecular dynamics or Monte Carlo simulation, which you follow the specially molecular dynamics where you follow the trajectory of the molecules in the time domain. So, in this, they will follow the Newton's laws of motion. What you do in Newton's laws of motion is, if suppose a molecule is moving, so it, it needs a change in momentum. So, the change in momentum, you get force. And how do you get force? You define a interatomic potential, how the atomic interact among each other cells. So, you take the derivative of that, you get force. Derivative of a potential with respect to coordinate, you get force and there you compute the trajectory. But now we are talking about a large number of molecules. For example, we are talking about two different types of collision. One is the molecule molecule and is molecule wall collision. So, these type of collisions are very small, means the time duration between these two collisions is of the order of, if I want to write it down, it is only 10 to the power of minus 11 second. Again, it becomes very impossible. So many molecules you cannot probably by a direct way you cannot do even molecular dynamic strategy if you apply it will be hardly you know for 100, 200 or 300 molecules. So, that is why we do a long time average of the appropriate microscopic property. So, the pressure as you see it is just an average over time of the force over container due to the molecular collisions. So, we are only taking the molecule wall collision in for pressure. So, it means so many molecules have still not come what is the actual way, what is the alternative way. One of the way I have discussed is molecular dynamic strategy, but still it fails for a number of molecules means when it is higher. So, it means that all these are not practical for routine calculation. It does not yield desired results. So, what do we get if even if you calculate the molecule wall collision after 10 to the power of minus 11 seconds? or if I want to convert in nanosecond, it is say let us say 100 nanosecond, even if we do it, what do we have? It does not give the desired result because you are doing with a very small subset of molecules, let us say only 100 molecules, 200 molecules, it will not give a result because it is a long term average. So, what we do? We thus can summarize that such calculation yield much more information because such calculation, it will give you both position and velocity position and velocity, not of much use position and velocity because we do not want with a little need for the location and velocity of so many molecules in a liter of gas and also if you and if you know this location and velocity of each of the molecule, you have to update its next position and next velocity every time a collision occurs, it is impossible to do that. But our concern or our aim or objective you can say is we require these properties which are macroscopic in nature such as pressure, temperature, internal energy, heat capacity or say Gibson Helmholtz energy. This we have already calculated those who are in the undergraduate chemical engineering or those who are in chemistry you have know the, the laws of thermodynamics you can calculate these properties through the Gibbsian law. So, you know these how the Gibbs energy is related to temperature and pressure you can calculate the Gibbs energy change or Helmholtz free function how is it related to temperature and volume. You can do that the classical manner, but in statistical manner how will you do that? So, that is what this course is all about. 
So it means finally if I summarize the computer output corresponding to one second of a real gas is impossible task because a collision occurs every 10 to the power of minus 11 second and then you have to conduct the entire simulation for one second. Now you compute and divide and how many collisions we have to see and how many updates we have to make. So that is impossible to do. So you cannot do possibly all these collisions you cannot measure. So it means all this leads to all this whatever this we can say it is the disadvantages requires a suitable compact statistical form. Now can we compact all this information in a statistical manner so that I can uh, take this number of molecules but also reduce all the information in some manner which is mathematically convenient. Let us say if I want to describe the velocity of all the molecules of all the atoms in the form of let us say a logarithmic form or in the form of a Gaussian form or in terms of let us say a probabilistic form. Can we reduce that information? That is all what we will do. So what we can do is the information about the particle velocities can be compactly presented in terms of probability distribution. So I talked about several distribution Gaussian, probabilistic or other logarithmic. So probability distribution is a one way where we can have a mathematical function which can describe the velocities with respect to its velocities. We can say what fraction of the molecules are having this much velocity, what fraction is having this much velocity and what fraction we having this much velocity. So we have a distribution of velocities instead of each and every velocity of individual molecule. Because if we know velocity distribution, we can compute temperature because you know velocity and temperature are related to each other. For example, in the temperature of a monoatomic gas could then be computed from the average kinetic energy, you can easily compute the, the temperature because for a monoatomic gas there is no interaction between the molecules. So you can easily calculate the kinetic energy and from the kinetic energy you can easily calculate temperature. So our aim is to develop a microscopic theory directly with a statistical or a probabilistic description. This is our aim of our course. So finally what we can see is no, we no longer inquire about the velocity of each molecule but only about the probability distribution. We are not concerned about the velocity of each molecule but what is the distribution, what is the probability distribution we have specified. That is all we are interested. So it means when we talk of probability distribution we talk about the average values. So probability distribution if we are able to specify we can then predict average values. So now the issue is that there should be some reference. Okay, I can write down the probability distribution of velocities in this particular room or your classroom but it should be specified. Now how big the classroom is or how big the container is, what is its dimension or what is its pressure inside what is the volume of this box a classroom. So these has you have to describe then only you can give a distribution meaningful distribution which will be useful. So we have to see how these molecules are arranged within that area. So there will be many such arrangement possible. So we can arrangement means we talk about states. So there are various states of the molecules consistent with the constraints of the overall system. For example we can say a particular area or a container or a closed area which has fixed temperature, volume and number of molecules. Let us say we have hydrogen gas or let us say nitrogen gas. We specify okay we have 100 molecules of nitrogen gas and we have the total volume of this box as V and temperature as T. Then can we provide a distribution of the velocities? Then it makes sense because then there will be many such states possible many states possible configuration where they can give similar results corresponding to a fixed temperature, volume and number of molecules. Or maybe another way of looking at it is you may also consider total pressure or total volume or number of molecules. So this is two different constraints. So it should even if you are describing any distribution it should have some constraint. So two of the constraints I have listed one can be temperature, volume and number of molecules or you can give pressure, volume and number of molecules or you can give pressure, volume 
or temperature. So, we come to thus a collection of possible states. So, even if we give these two constraints, there will be many such states possible. So, molecules may arrange in different manner. Let us say if we are picking this fixed temperature, volume and number of molecules. So, there may be molecules which may be arranged in different manner all giving since we have fixed the temperature, volume and number. So, pressure is fixed. So, um, let us say pressure is some value. So, that pressure value may be different for different configuration but the pressure value becomes same. So, it means that molecules may arrange themselves in different manner but the total pressure will always coming up to be let us say 1 bar. So, there will be several such possible state possible with the constraints as above. So, with this we actually give some names to these constraints. Some of the names are canonical ensemble. Canonical ensemble refers to all those states which are consistent with fixed temperature, volume and number of molecules. So, any state which has temperature as fixed volume and number of molecules, we can term that as canonical ensemble or microcanonical ensemble refers to all states consistent with fixed total energy, volume and number of molecules or grand canonical ensemble are which are those phases which is having constant volume temperature and chemical potential. Chemical potential I need not to reiterate because we have studied in classical thermodynamics it is the partial molar gives energy. So, chemical potential you know is very important because the phases whether it is liquid liquid or vapor liquid you always tend to equate the chemical potential of a let us say a solute in both the phases. So, that is what you calculate the partial molar gives energy. So, that is the chemical potential. So, now then comes the important definition which is called macroscopic and microscopic system. So, macroscopic system as I told you they may be defined by number of molecules, the volume and temperature as before. Microscopic system may require certain more information. Microscopic system means what I have been discussing in the previous slides, we need the position and velocity vector of each molecule. So, this may let us say you have a system of n number of molecules. So, it means you need to define the position vector. This is the let us say the position vector of the first molecule. This is the position and the velocity vector of the second molecule like that position and velocity vector of the nth molecule. So, it means you require this data additional data. But these macroscopic and microscopic state may be different, but they may be same also. But when does this become equal? When does micro state and macro state become same? They become same when these conditions suffice. So, what are these conditions? Number of molecules in the micro state must be the same as the number of molecules in the microscopic state. Position vectors must be constrained to be within the volume V and energy of the microscopic state must be equal to the energy of the macroscopic state. Okay. Let us say I specify number of molecules, in this case A, B, C means number of molecules, then the volume and then the total energy I specify. So, this becomes the macroscopic states. It does not know where the molecules are, how it is arranged, what is its velocity, what is its position, it does not know. But overall we know it has 100 number of molecules, let us say it has a volume of 1 centimeter cube and it has an energy let us say of 10 joules. We know that is constant, but we do not know where these are. Now, the micro state means there may be many such configuration of this macro state where the n v e of each such micro state is exactly same as of the macro state. Let us say I am talking of four such micro state for an example. So, there are four micro states I am referring here. So, let us say the molecule may be arranged like this in one case let us say there are five molecules and in another case it may be like this okay. or in another case five molecules may be like this or, or in some case like this. See you have five molecules let us say I have defined as five molecules. So, all have five molecules the volume all the microstates volume are same 
and the energy also it is same energy same means the distribution of energy within the all the molecules if you total up it becomes the total energy which is e that is also same so each of this micro state is equal to this macro state so this particular macro state can be a outcome of so many states possible states or possible micro states these are possible micro states so possible micro states may be huge because the molecules may arrange in different manner each giving the number of molecules volume and energy as specified by the micro state so these are the micro states so you should remember that will be only be same when these three condition suffices a b and c so as i just told you let us summarize what we told large number of such state are consistent with the condition as i told you there may be i told you in the four states i have shown there may be many such states which are equivalent to the macroscopic state but the issue is there is a catch because the position and velocity vector may be counted repeatedly okay let's say uh, what i do is a position let's say there is one position where uh, i have one of the molecule v1 first molecule having velocity v1 and let's say its position vector is r1 second one is v2 position vector r2 like that or maybe i put another one v3 then it is r3 so these are all vectors maybe i put a line here to indicate its vector like that okay let's say it has n number of molecules we know so this is one arrangement now for example there can be another arrangement which is like this so it means if you see only the position the molecule are same but the arrangement has been different the first molecule which we have counted here is having the description in the second molecule in the second another micro state so this is one micro state this is the second micro state both are equivalent so both are equivalent except that the positional velocity vector of the second molecule becomes the first molecule in the second micro state other way thing so these two again micro states are similar like that it cannot distinguish between the different position of the two micro state as they are indistinguishable because the molecules are indistinguishable because uh, you don't know whether i have counted it once or twice so it means if there are n number of molecules there are n factorial ways of distributing these molecules and so there will be n factorial ways all the counting will be similar so you are counting it repeatedly this is actually true because it follows heisenberg's uncertainty principle because you cannot have both the position as well as the momentum accurately defined if you want to calculate one position you will be uncertain in the momentum likewise conversely so this actually follows this rule so it means that you cannot have a position and the velocity vector defined for each molecule which is unique because these are primarily indistinguishable in distinguishable so these are indistinguishable because it does not have any color okay i can say i can paint this particular molecule as blue second one as red so then we can say okay i have counted this red here so i won't count this micro state because they are same you cannot do that so that's why you are over counting it so i wrote here the position and velocity vector may be counted repeatedly this is one catch when you count the micro state so it means you will have a number of possible states of a system to be very high so we have many such micro states where you can assign the molecules so if you want in that manner so it is very difficult to do what you do is that you have a certain values that is if i want to let's say define what is the energy of a particle in a box so you cannot have any energy you can have only those energy which is governed by quantum chemistry so quantum mechanical energy states we have for example 
in the case of a particle in a box which I will just now discuss, not all values of the energies are allowed but only certain discrete values are allowed. So what are the discrete energy values? I will tell you. So for example, if this is a box, this is a particle in a box, so I will put one of the side as L, it is a cubical box, so everything is L. So its length will be obviously v to the power of 1 by 3, okay. So the total energy from quantum chemical microstates, allowable microstates which I am not going to discuss because these are advanced level of quantum chemistry. So the what I want to see is the total energy which you can provide for a particle in a box is a factor of these three quantum numbers Lx, Ly, Lz. So if I want to write the energy of a particle in a box, this will be equal to h square by 8 m v to the power of 2 by 3, then Lx square plus Ly square plus Lz square. Okay. So it means Lx, Ly, Lz are integers, it can only have integer value. So it means whichever way you do this can only take the values of integer, Lx, Ly, Lz can only take the value of integer. So what is it others I tell you what is H, H you know is the Planck's constant. Now Planck's constant can be defined in both manners, it, the value is around 6.62 into minus 27 arg per second or in terms of joule it becomes 6.62 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joules second. Okay. So what is arg and joule, how they are related? So this you should remember the electron volt, joule and arg because you will be requiring this as we go ahead with future modules. So one electron volt is close to 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joule which is equal to 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 12 arg. Okay. So this is the conversion of the units of energy. So coming back to our problem, we have these units. So here H is Planck's constant, M is the mass of the particular particle, V is the volume of the box. So you can have different values of Lx. So for example, if I want to you know try out these values of Lx, so I can uh, write down different values Lx, Ly, Lz. Let us suppose I define some states. Let us suppose I make Lx as 2, Ly as 1, Lz as 1. This is one state. Second state, you will have Lx as 1, Ly as 2, Lz as 1. And the third state, I make Lz as 2 and remaining as 2. So now, if you want to insert this 2, 1, 1 inside this expression, you will all get the same value. So it means that if I want to put this for the first state, you will get the energy. Let us say this is state 1, this is state 2, this is state 3. So the state 1, E1 will be equal to H square upon 8 m V 2 by 3. So you take up the sums 1 square plus. So this is same as if I go for the second state. which is same as I am writing it here E3 which is equal to H square by 8 m v 2 by 3 then it is 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. Plus 2 square. So th all these are coming to the same value of energy. So we can say all this arrangement of the this quantum numbers Lx, Ly, Lz gives us the same value of the energy. It means what it is? These are three energy states, but all of them have equal energy. It means we can convert one of them, we can say this is energy level. So the energy level, we can say there are two ways of doing it. Either you enumerate the number of energy states. In this case, you have these three energy states, but all are having equal energy. Or what you can do is 
you can say this is the energy level and it has three degeneracy. So it is threefold degenerate. So energy level you can call each of this as energy level because all are having the same values. Threefold degenerate. Threefold degeneracy. It means it has three such microstates which are having same energy level. So this is the difference between an energy level and an energy state. Energy state is these are the individual energy states. This one, two, and three all give the same energy. All are consistent about those three conditions. They all represent the same macrostate. But when you talk about energy level, we talk this is have an energy level where it is threefold energy. Means with that perspective, each energy level has three different degeneracy energy degeneracy. Okay. Now we come to the assembly of molecules. So till now what I have discussed in the particle in a box is a single molecule. So single molecule, what are the different energies? Now we are talking about in the mainly what we talk about in our classical or whether it is statistical is talk about the assembly of molecules, number of molecules. So energy states of a large number of molecules is interest to us rather than of a single molecule. So energy of a assembly of non-interacting molecules is simply the sum of the energies of the individual molecules. So to account, just now I discussed the indistinguishability of identical molecules and energy state of the collection of molecules is specified by giving a set of occupation number. So now what we do, we do not say okay this one has this much position and velocity, the other molecule has this much velocity and potential. What we do, let us say we talk about velocity. Now we do not say okay we have uh, these many molecules, each molecules are given the velocities, we have two rows or two columns, one with molecule number, one with the corresponding velocity. Instead of that, what we will do, we will say okay these many molecules have these many energy, they are clubbed here, these many molecules are similar energy, they are clubbed here like that. So they are given a set of numbers. How are these numbers defined? For example, this is a macro state of an assembly of molecules, I write like this, it is a vector. It is the ith macro state. So if I want to write it down, it means it is N1 I N2 ok. What does this mean? N1 N2, this subscript means single energy molecular state. So first energy state of a single molecule, second energy state of a single molecule like that. J means jth energy state of a single molecule and what is this n? n means how many molecules are there. So in each of this how many molecules it is defining. So we do not have any information about the particular which molecule is where. We all can say okay these many number let us say 10 molecules are in the first single energy molecular state all are having similar energy they have been clubbed together means n1. n2 means if you are having a different energy state or energy value of a single molecule. So they are n2 number of molecules let us say 5 molecules are here like this. So it means this is each of this corresponding to the entire assembly of molecules we call this as ith microstate of the assembly of molecules. Like this, this I may also change. But if I take this particular microstate, I can compute the total energy. Because we know that the energy, let us say, of this is Ej. Okay, sorry, if I want to write here, it is E1, this is E2, like that, Ej. So please pay here attention, that is means I am writing here like this, Nji. J corresponds to the energy state of single molecule. Okay. I is the microstate of the assembly of molecule. assembly of molecules. 
So it means if I want to find out for this particular microstate what will the total energy, what I need to do is multiply each of this number into this respective energies. So if I want to write what is Ei, so Ei will be summation of Nji into Ej. So what is J? All molecular energy states. So it will sum up J is all single molecule is evident. So I write here only all molecular states. So for this particular ith microstate, if I make the product of the respective numbers of molecules occupying a particular molecular state and multiply with their corresponding energy and then sum them up, I will get the total energy. Okay. So, because now the issue is different microstates are consistent with given energy of value. Now, here I am writing I, this I may also change because I told you this N1, N2, N3, they may also distribute in a similar fashion, all giving the total energy value to be similar. So, they may be distributed differently. Okay. So, here we come to the concept of thus the energy levels and energy states. I hope now you understand. What are the difference of this? Energy states means this is one energy state. Like that there may be I is the one of the ith energy state of assembly of molecules. Like that there may be many such energy states. Now what you do is you write down what is E1, E2, E3. This way you can write down let us say it has n number of energy states. But this number will be very huge. So you will have so many energy states or microstates consistent with those three conditions. So can we really write down or enumerate all this? It is very difficult because some of these energy states may be equal. So the values of energy may be similar. So there is no point. So sometimes what they do is they will write some value that say energy and then they will say what is the degeneracy. So it means if it has a value of E, there may be four such values of energy states having the same value. So that is called energy level. So either you represent like this manner, you write all the microstate of the assembly of molecules E1, E2, E3, E4, E5 like that En which is a very tedious process or you write the energy levels and provide the degeneracy. Either way you can mention the assembly of molecules. So now what it is? So we are now sure that this energy states will be pretty high. So probability that each of them is 0 or 1 will be very less. So most of the energy states, so the incoming molecules can occupy any of these energy states. So the probability of each of the energy state occupying let us say at least a single molecule is very less. So the number of molecules which are present is far far less than the available energy states of the assembly of molecules. That is what I mean to say. Okay. The number of possible energy states will be pretty much higher than the number of molecules you are assigning. So that is where we come to the concepts of energy levels and energy states. Now this energy levels and energy states I will talk about more in details in the next lecture. For this current lecture please understand the concept which I just now explain the energy levels and energy states. Energy states is again I repeat it is just the continuation of all the values of energy. You line up all the values of energy and then you say which molecule is in which energy. Energy level means a particular energy value where so many states are having equal value. So that is called energy level. So this lecture I will conclude here. In the next lecture I will see more of the postulates of statistical mechanics. So as before, as I told you, the book which I am following is the Sandler's book, which is an introduction to applied statistical thermodynamics because it has problems of chemical engineering domain. So I will talking more about or I will discussing more about these books. Obviously, you are always welcome to refer the other three books which are pioneering books which I have listed here, the second, third book of Macquarie or the Chandler's book or Allen and Tisleaf which we will be requiring for molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.